<laughs> yeah, doesn't he look like him? Yeah. He, he can very well be like his twin brother. They really look they really look alike very much. Okay, hey, it's seven o'clock. Good morning everybody. Oh my <laughs> It's seven o'clock. Good morning. This is Jake Klayoshko and welcome to Catholic Best Practices on a Tuesday morning. Today is September 19, 2017. Okay. And the gospel for today comes from St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nine, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. And he drew near to the gate of the city. A man who had died was being carried out. The son, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. Huh? That was yesterday. No, this was Sunday's gospel in the Latin Mass. <laughs> Everybody's already commenting. Oh, we heard that just the other day. Uh, this was the same gospel we read at the Latin Mass on Sunday. So today it's being read in, uh, in today's Mass. Okay. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this, the bearers halted and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. And, God, uh, and this report about him spread throughout the whole of Judea, and in all the surrounding region. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her, and said, do not weep. Our Lord felt sorry for the widow. Our Lord felt compassion, right? Had compassion on this widow and performed a miracle for her. Brought her son back to life. Now, there are many other parts of the gospel where we hear our Lord expressing the same sentiments, right? Uh, he had compassion on the crowd that was following him and had nothing to eat, right? For uh, two or three days, they had been following him. And he, ha he performed the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, right? Because he had compassion on them. Of course, there are many instances in the gospel where we hear our Lord uh, healing the sick, right? And casting out devils. All of that is a sign of Jesus' compassion, Right? And mercy. Um, just last year, Pope Francis declared what year in the church? The year of mercy. Right, the year of mercy, precisely to emphasize uh, uh, to emphasize our Lord's um, mercy towards us, and he uh, he even uh, made it a, a, a an entire celebration, practically, for uh, the, the whole church. Now. Here's what we have, to, uh, we have to realize. Our Lord understands our human condition in the same way that our Lord understood the, the affliction, the, the sorrow, the difficulty that the, that the dying son or the dead son could have brought uh, for her, right? Uh, in the same manner that, uh, uh, as we heard in the, in the homily last Sunday, right? The son might, be, might have been the only hope of this widow, for a better life, right? And yet, and yet he died at an early age, leaving uh, his mother uh, to uh, with with no resources, maybe, and no way to uh, sustain herself. So Jesus saw through that human difficulty. Jesus could understand the human uh, side of uh, uh, of living. You know all the difficulties that accompanied. Um, uh, that kind of a situation and he had pity on the widow that is why 
he uh, decided to perform that miracle and brought the man back to life. Now, here is where uh, we have to understand that Jesus knows, knows our afflictions. Jesus knows the difficulties of life. Jesus knows what it means to be human. Jesus knows the things that we undergo, the things that we suffer from. Right? He knows. And why does he know? Because? Well, because he is God, true. But besides being God, he is also, he experienced it himself. Why? Because he is human. Right? Very good, Mia. He knows our afflictions because he himself had experienced it. Right? Because he is both God and, and man. He's both God and man. Right? Jesus Christ is both God and man. So, uh, he is not, uh, he, he does not understand us just because he is God, but even more so because he is also human. Okay? He himself wept for Lazarus, for example. He experienced sorrow at the loss of a friend, right? And he wept when Lazarus died. See? Um, he felt hungry, right? He knows what it feels to be hungry because he himself experienced hunger. Maybe not only once or twice, but in fact, uh, in fact, many times because he must have been going around preaching, you know, and, uh, and um, uh, he would grow hungry and tired. Oh, what happened there? He would go hungry and tired on the trip, right, with his apostles. Eh? Um, he, he felt uh, the pangs of hunger when he, um, when he uh, mortified himself for 40 days before his uh, public life, right? Uh, remember that situation where they were passing through some grains uh, and, and of wheat and then uh, the apostles decided to pick some and eat for themselves because well, they were hungry. You can imagine Jesus must have been hungry too. Right? And Jesus was tired. Many times he was tired. We would read in the Gospels, he would take his apostles to a, to a deserted place, to a place where they can rest. Okay? And many of those occasions were in the house of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, right? where they would just go there to rest okay? and, uh, and uh, be away from the crowd for, for a few days. And here we, sh we, we see him having pity, okay? having pity on the widow. And expressing his uh, his compassion to her. Now the the gospels are littered with these kinds of stories, showing the human side of Jesus, okay? showing the humanity of Jesus. And we have um, we have to be convinced of of the fact that Jesus is very much like each and every one of us in all things, except for except for sin right very good so in fact let us read from the catechism about those very uh, points you see um, uh, in, in the catechism part one the profession of faith okay I'd, I'd encourage everybody to review this on section two chapter two article three about Jesus being conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary what do you call that mystery the mystery where, where Jesus became a man. What do you call that mystery? What? Jana. Oh, incarnation. Okay, the incarnation. When did that happen? When was the incarnation? When did that happen? Huh? Jacob? During the annunciation, right? Right from that point where, our, the, where the angel Gabriel announced to Mary she was to be the mother of God and Mary said yes see mary accepted at that point at that point the incarnation already happened right so the son of man the son of god second person of the blessed trinity became man when mary accepted uh, 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 god's invitation for her to be the mother of god and so let's read from the catechism it says right the word became flesh the church calls incarnation the fact okay, the word incarnation is the fact that the son of god assumed a human nature in order to accomplish our salvation in it see 
So that's a very important uh, um, uh, uh, definition of the incarnation here, right? The Son of God assumed the human nature, took upon himself a human nature, in order to accomplish our salvation in it. In other words, the way that our salvation was going to be carried out was precisely through the human nature of Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ assuming that human nature and suffering for our sins. Okay? We do we understand that? That is the, the very uh, uh, reason for the incarnation. And so Jesus Christ is true God and true man. Right? True God and true man. He is not some kind of an odd mixture of uh, being part man and part God. God, right? He is both truly human and truly God, right? And as we read again from the Catechism, uh, point 464, the unique and altogether singular event of the incarnation of the Son of God does not mean that Jesus Christ is part God and part man. Nor does it imply that he is the result of a confused mixture okay, of the divine and the human. He became truly man while remaining truly God. Jesus Christ is true God and true man. You know, through the uh, early part of the church, early centuries of the church, there, were plenty of, there was plenty of confusion about, uh, about this um, um, Jesus having uh, both the uh, being God and man at the same time, right? There were many heresies that came about, and that is that became the occasion for uh, oh God bless you for um, the Ecumenical Council in uh, Chalcedon to uh, define define the real meaning of uh, the nature of um, Jesus Christ as both God and man. So the following uh, the fathers of the church unanimously teach and confess one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the same perfect in divinity, perfect in humanity, the same truly God and truly man, composed of rational soul and body, consubstantial with the Father as to His divinity, consubstantial with us to His humanity like us in all things but sin. He was begotten from the Father before all ages as to his divinity. And in these last days, for us and for our salvation, was born as to his humanity of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Beautiful. You know, beautiful. The... the uh, I encourage you folks to read up on the Catechism because there, there are so many beautiful teachings there from the fathers of the church see, and uh, uh, about, uh, about the Incarnation, besides many other things <laughs> we can learn from the Catechism. If we want to really grow in our understanding of our faith, folks, let's begin from the Catechism. There's plenty there to understand for us. Now, but what is uh, a practical thing for us to... Uh, Take home today from this uh, episode of uh, Catholic Best Practices, from this gospel that we're reading today. You know, I have one recommendation. I have one recommendation, and that is, let us try, let us try, see, as Catholics, we have to try to learn how to appeal to the humanity of Jesus. Okay? Sometimes... Sometimes we have the tendency, we have the tendency of uh, 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 looking at Jesus, we're looking at God as one big, awesome uh, being somewhere around there. Right? Uh, uh, there's no personal connection. There's no personal connection between, between us and, and the Godhead. And you see, this is the reason why Jesus became man. Besides saving us from our sins through our, through, the, through our own humanity, as the Catechism already told us earlier, 
the other part of that is to try to bring God closer to us. It is to give a face to God. Okay? And that face is Jesus Christ. It is to be able to give, uh, to associate, to associate a face, a human reality to that of Jesus Christ. To bridge the gap between the divine and the human, which is us. Okay? So, uh, Jesus is there for us to try and, 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 uh, and uh, be intimate with God through Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way to God. I am the way to salvation. I am the way to connect you to God. That is what he means. So, for our practical purposes, for our practical purposes, I'd like to invite you, I'd like to invite everybody, see, to appeal to the humanity of Jesus Christ. Jesus understands our human condition. Jesus knows. He knows what we need before we even ask him, right? He himself said that. But more than that, he knows and understands our human condition. He knows our pains. He knows our afflictions. He knows what makes us happy. He knows what gives us joy. He knows what worries us in a very human, real, practical, concrete way. Because he himself was man. And so, when you pray... When you pray, I would recommend have that image of Jesus not only in your mind, in your, in, in, in your, in your uh, thoughts. Uh, picture him as a man right in front of you that you're talking to. In fact, I, I don't have my, my, my wallet with me, but you know I carry that image of, uh, 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 of Jesus in my wallet. And when I pray, sometimes I look at the cross, right? The other day we were, we were, we were just celebrating the uh, Feast of the Cross, right? These things, these icons are there to help us imagine <clears throat> Jesus as man. And by the way, right, we have our Lord Jesus Christ exposed in the, in the, uh, in the Adoration Chapel, right? Where we ourselves go every day. See, that is the closest we can get to a physical Jesus, right? To Jesus being right in front of us. See, Jesus as man, of course, in this case, in the form of bread. But that is our Jesus. That is the most, the more, the, the most physical uh, uh, we could get a, a connection to, to, uh, to Jesus. Let us, let us appeal to the humanity of Jesus. Let us, let us pray, let us pray to the Jesus who was man. See? Let us pray to Jesus who was man because he understands what we, what we need. He understands what we are afflicted with. He understands how we are. He understands how we feel. Okay? And if we appeal to that, if we appeal to that, what a consolation it always is that we are not talking to, to uh, uh, an unimaginable God somewhere around that uh, does not know us. No, we are, we are praying to a God who knows us personally, intimately, by name, understanding our human condition all the way around. Okay? So Jesus is our brother, is our God, and is our companion in the journey of uh, life because he himself lived through this life. He knows and he understands how we are. He knows what makes us human. Okay? So let us appeal to that humanity of Jesus when we, when we pray. Okay? okay, that's it for us. Any questions? No, no room for questions. <laughs> we got to go prepare for Mass. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.